Hey, and welcome back to another time sticking YouTube video. Today we're going to be looking at a piece of watchmaking history that fundamentally changed the way that people look at timekeeping. So stick with us through this intro and we're going to dive right in with you. A new technology emerged in the later half of the 20th century that nearly displaced mechanical timekeeping and rocked the watch world to its core. This invention was the engineering of the quartz movement. Being more accurate than their mechanical counterparts overall, with a much lower cost to manufacture, it was no surprise that quartz watches shook the global watch market to its core, thus kicking off what is now known as the quartz crisis or revolution. Although the first of these commercial quartz watches came across as an expensive electronic novelty, the trend took hold and still affects the watch and clock world to this day. Quartz movement watches themselves operate off of the oscillations of small quartz crystals inside of their movements, instead of using traditional escapements like mechanical watches do. These oscillations work at regular frequency and are easy to trigger and harness energy from, thus moving the gears of a quartz watch at highly accurate intervals. Though many mechanicals, especially high-end ones, can keep great time, their function wears down over time and causes a loss of seconds, minutes, or even hours as they age. It's this difference in upkeep and overall convenience that truly pushed quartz watches to the forefront of the watch world. Also, in conjunction with lower labor and manufacturing costs, the quartz movement was easy to adapt to increasingly small electronic parts. This made the technology a no-brainer for watchmakers trying to appeal to a broader market. Despite this, many traditionalists have fought and still fight for maintaining the mechanical legacy inside of the quartz revolution. In terms of history, it was primarily the Swiss and Japanese that sort of fought over who was going to birth this new technology. Indeed, Japanese and Swiss watchmakers had a sort of arms race over quartz technology during the 1960s. In this international fight, Japanese brand Seiko ended up coming out on top with their A-bomb, the Astron, in 1969. This wristwatch essentially kicked off the quartz crisis or the revolution. Not long after this release, Swiss watchmakers engineered their own quartz movement, the Beta 21. A few Swiss watch manufacturers utilized this movement in their watches after its creation. Omega, a watch company with a reputation for excellence, jumped on board with the Swiss Beta 21 early on. But as time moved forward, Japanese brands Casio, Citizen, and Seiko had moved their R&D toward new variations on quartz watches. Through the 1970s and 80s, a sizable group of Swiss brands decided to stick with mechanical watchmaking, much to their detriment. Though some have survived, a lot of watchmakers had to liquidate their wares and were taken up by more monetarily successful businesses due to the quartz revolution. By 1983, Swiss watchmakers were in decline, dropping from around 1,600 to just 600 watchmakers actively plying their trade. However, the release of the Swatch, short for second watch, just one year prior to 1983, helped boost market share for Swiss watchmakers to some degree. Despite Swiss watchmakers having a few battles won, Seiko was overall coming out on top during this time when it came to manufacture and sales of quartz watches. With an annual revenue reaching up to the realm of 700 million a year, even the most well-equipped and powerful Swiss brands were trying to catch up to the pace of this Japanese giant. On top of this, Seiko was producing over 18 million timepieces per year. This made it tough for other Japanese manufacturers to keep up as well. Lower tier mechanical brands like Waltham, Caravelle, and Elgin, among others, took the biggest hit during the height of the quartz crisis. Their more affordable mechanicals fell into some obsolescence due to a more inexpensive and efficient technology. Some mid-tier brands struggled, but eventually learned to thrive during this time. Longines, Hoyer, and Omega were among these stay afloat Swiss brands. A lot of this survival came from a new focusing on branding. Branding to this day has kept many Swiss watchmakers hitting hard, despite their dips during peak quartz revolution. Looking at the quartz crisis or revolution in terms of retrospection, it does come across as a bit of repeated history. A similar crisis occurred in the late 19th century when the Waltham Watch Company began making mechanical watches with interchangeable parts. These mass-produced timepieces gave traditional Swiss watchmakers a run for their money. 
Much to the fanfare of the everyday consumer, made in mass watches were easy to purchase, often costing less than other mechanical pocket watches of the time. As it stands today, the quartz crisis or revolution continues to hold hands with the third industrial or digital revolution, which kicked off in the 1950s. With an increasingly automated world, it could be that the next big crisis in timekeeping is smart tech. So be mindful of trends in the watch world over the coming decades. If the last turn of the century is any indication, a massive shift in overall technological interface will reshape how we relate ourselves to time and will fundamentally change the tools that we use to describe it. Until the next big upset in timekeeping comes along, whether it's smart tech or something else, keep an eye on your quartz watches. They're actually a pretty good testament to the democratization and evolution of timekeeping. Despite this though, mechanical watches are still very valuable to keep and have upkept, so keep your watchmakers and your watch techs in mind anytime you need your mechanical piece worked on. Hello, and thanks for watching our YouTube video today. If you enjoyed it, please give it a like, and you can find similar videos right here. For more new and interesting content from Time Sticking on our channel, please subscribe at the link here. And for more information about wristwatch repair and watch maintenance generally, you can find us at timesticking.com. Thanks so much and have a great day.